So we're going to learn about some material that's covered in chapter 11. So we're going to learn about what happens when you form mixtures. So chapter 11 is all about mixtures. So we're going to be starting off by looking at the solution process. So let's consider a solute. So in this example, I've got just a stack of sodium chloride here. So ionic compound, we've got these sodium cations, little red dots, and these green dots are the chloride anions, and they're arranged in a crystal lattice. And over here we've got a solvent, so we're going to use water as our solvent. So um, these little guys right here represent water molecules. They hydrogen bond. My son thinks these look like Mickey Mouse, but you get the idea. So now we're going to mix these. And what happens when we mix them is that we have to break these hydrogen bonds between the water molecules. We have to break the ionic bonds between the sodium and the chlorides. And then we're going to reform ion dipole attractions between the sodiums, the chlorides, and the water molecules. So that's illustrated up here we get when we mix these. So the process of mixing involves breaking up this ionic solid and surrounding these ions with water molecules. So for example this little red dot right here is a sodium cation which has a positive charge and it's surrounded by the negative end of the water molecules just like that. So that's what's going on when we mix. So we want to begin to think about how this process might take place and look at the energies involved in making a solution. So to do that, we're going to break the process down into steps. So we're going to imagine that we do this process in a funny way. So we're going to start off with our solute again, our sodium chloride. And we're going to imagine that we take those sodium chloride and we convert it into a gas. So we're going to break all of the ionic bonds between the sodium cations and the chloride anions. And we're going to separate them out so that they're gas phase ions, like that. Over here we're going to do the same thing with the solvent. We're going to break all of those hydrogen bonds between the water molecules and separate them so that we've got gas phase water molecules. Then we're going to recombine them and let the water molecules surround the ions like this. The process of surrounding ions or anything really with water is called hydration. So the water molecules hydrate these ions. So here you can see the ion ion dipole forces being formed between a water molecule and the ions. And so that's a process of solution. So we can think about breaking it down into these two steps. The reason we can do that is we can anal the reason we want to do that is so that we can analyze the uh, process separately. So we want to analyze this step, this step, and then think about the overall changes in energies. Now we know that when you break ionic bonds, right, they're stuck together, so if we're going to pull them apart, we have to do a lot of work to make that happen. So that's going to take energy. We have to put energy in to break the ions apart. Similarly, these waters are connected by um, intermolecular forces, relatively strong intermolecular forces, much weaker than an ionic bond, but still relatively strong. So these hydrogen bonds, we're going to have to break those to create space to put these ions. Then we're going to create new bonds. Whenever we create a bond, energy is released. So we want to explore how these energies change in the process of making a solution. So ultimately we want to calculate what is this delta H of solution, the enthalpy change when we make a solution. So it turns out that's relatively easy to measure in a, in a calorimeter, but we'd like to think about the pieces that go in to making up this whole enthalpy change. So one of those pieces involves that first process that we were looking at, taking the ionic compound apart and separating it into gas phase ions. So we're going to define a new quantity. So imagine that I've got this process going on. I've got sodium cations, one mole, in the gas phase. They're going to react with chloride anions, one mole, in the gas phase. And when they come together, they're going to form sodium chloride salt as a solid. Okay, so that process involves forming ionic bonds. Anytime we make a bond, it releases energy. Anytime we break a bond, it takes energy. So this is bond making, it's going to release energy. And here's this process shown graphically. So we've got a sodium cations in the gas phase, we might have a whole bunch of those. Chloride anions in the gas phase, and we're going to mix those together. And plus likes minus, they're going to stick together, form an ionic bond, and there we've made the solid. So we're going to make this bond, it releases energy. The amount of energy that it releases, that enthalpy change, that's what we call lattice energy. So a lattice is the way that the ions are stacked together to make a big chunk of the solid. And so we call that the energy of the lattice, or lattice energy. 
So lattice energy is defined this way. U equals K times Q1 times Q2 divided by D. You say, hey, I've seen that equation before. That looks like Coulomb's law. And it does, but it's a little bit different. So it's defined in similar ways. Q1 and Q2 are the charges on the ions, so plus one and minus one in this case. D again is the separation between their centers. K, however, is different from the constant that appears in Coulomb's law. K actually depends on the whole structure of the ionic lattice. So K, it matters how you're going to stack these ions up together. So for example, these two chemical compounds, sodium chloride and cesium chloride, have different structures. Even though both sodium and cesium are in the same group of the periodic table, the alkali metals, cesium is a much bigger ion. And so when you're packing it next to chloride, chlorides, um, it takes a different amount of space, and so you have to arrange them differently. So the whole lattice energy depends on the arrangement of all the adon atoms, all the ions, and how they're pulling on each other. So we have to take all those interactions into consideration. Coulomb's law is just about pairs of ions. So this factor K then includes all the ion contributions and we care about how they're packed together. And so you have to look up K for different types of ionic lattices depending on what the structure is. So that's how we could calculate the lattice energy one way. We're going to look at a different way of calculating lattice energy because it turns out that this experiment is really hard to do because it's really hard to come up with gas phase ions that are separated like this. But we can calculate it through a different path.